Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am sitting in front of Walmart. Walmart in Biddeford, Maine. I am on my way back from the rehab center that my mother is in, in Saco, Maine. And I thought I would swing by Walmart for two reasons. One, they have fabric at this Walmart. Sanford Walmart does not have fabric. And I'm just curious to know if they have a, a clearance section. I've looked online, and there's really not much I can get for clearance fabric at walmart.com. And so I just wanted to check out what they have here. I'm not really shopping right now for fabric, but I'm just curious to know what they have. The other thing is, on my last night in Memphis, Skylar spent some of her YouTube and chores money and bought some of these kits of things to do. She loves anything crafty. And one of them was a complete flop. And I'm going to see if I can return it. I couldn't return it there because I was leaving the next day. So she had purchased um, a lip gloss maker. Totally not worth the money, but she did enjoy it. So in that sense, it's worth the money. That was just tubes of lip gloss, and you had empty tubes also. And you just squirted various flavors in the other tubes, so it didn't require any mixing. You know, she likes to, like, create the thing herself. But you could add some shimmer, so that was pretty cool. And so that worked out great. She liked doing it, and she was happy to have those and to share with her friends and things like that. She was taking them to school the next day. The other thing she got that she enjoyed was the, oh, the one to make your own scented perfume. I enjoyed that one. You got a perfume base. You got scents. You got glitter and sequins and you got empty little roller bottles you know like a deodorant roll-on only you know just empty perfume bottles and stickers to decorate the bottles and that she really enjoyed because you added the base and you picked the flavor or the scent you wanted they all had like you know flavors of fruit things like that she got to mix them and then add the glitter and some sequins, so really enjoyed that. All these kits are $10 each. That one, again, you know, it's worth $10 for the pleasure she got out of it. You know, it's just these kits that come out around Christmas time. Those two, though, for sure, if you are shopping for these, the roll-on perfume one is worth it. But the lip gloss, fun, not as as creative as I would have liked it to be. The complete flop was the one to make your own lip balm. They came with the lip balm containers, some wax that had to be melted, but they did not have microwave instructions. They had it where you boil water and then you put the little cup and let it melt in the cup and stir. That is not a good craft for children because they're this close to boiling water and you're trying to stir with this little cup. and So that wasn't good. So I tried doing it and it was almost impossible to get that to melt. So I even tried the microwave. That did not work. When I finally was able to like forever stir that and somewhat get it melted, there was not even anywhere close to filling the four or five lip balm containers that they had. And that was a complete fail and I told her I said you know what this one no child would ever be able to do it an adult can't even do it so I said let me take it home and I'll see if I can return it I do return things that I think are not worth any part of the money at all and that one is not worth it at all the other thing she got which was $15 was the slime kit and of course she loved that anything to do with making slime she loves and it had quite a few things that was a Nickelodeon slime kit I think she has a video on her channel showing these things I, it was nighttime and we were outside so I don't know how much you can see it but if you want to go take a look I'll have it on the end screen so I'm going in to do those things. As for an update for my mother, well, I'll just talk about that um, when I come back out. This is the lip balm one. Um, I believe they were all probably just my style. I don't know. This is what the box looks like. And the other things, the um, perfume and lip gloss, you know, we're in the same section. So if you see these things, just avoid this one. There are 12. Wait a little bit to see if it goes fast. I think they only have two people at the desk. Yes, only two people. I'll wait a little bit. 
I don't know if I waited 10 minutes. It went fast and I ended up having nine people behind me. I don't know what people are returning. Doesn't that happen after Christmas? Maybe some people got carried away on, I was gonna say Good Friday. What's it called? Black Friday. Oh, I just passed the craft section, but we're going to fabric. I gotta tell you, my anxiety levels are extremely high because of the meeting I just was in. Just being in a situation like that, there was one, two, three, four, five, six of us in all. Oh, that's why I didn't wanna talk about it in the car right away, because I'm trying to relax a little bit first. Okay, I don't know where fabric is. I have to look for it. Okay, they don't have a ton of fabric, I'll show you. Ooh, I'm gonna price the muslin while I'm here. They have some solids and the muslin, and then they have this. Now those seem to be like $4.97. There's some down there laying flat that are like $3.72. And I see these solids, I think they're saying $2.97. So that's not bad for solids. Do like. Then I see flannels, and my goodness, Looks like they're priced $3.97. One's $3.50. $3.97. That's cheaper than Martin's. And it's nice flannel. Well, I'm glad I stopped by here. Okay, and then we have like, you know, apparel or specialty fabrics. But these are the only two aisles that I see. And they have some of the nice soft stuff. Oh, that is wicked soft, wicked. Okay, let me see if I can find a price like on this one for the heck of it. $7.84 per yard. That's not bad though, not for that kind of fabric. These bolts of muslin, probably these two, are $1.97 per yard, but they're only 36 inches wide. We have to watch that. The one I got on Amazon was 381 or something like that per yard, but it was 54 inches wide, I believe. But these were a little softer. I'm gonna check out some others. Yeah, it looks like 397 for 44 wide. I wish they had like 108 wide. They probably do, but I haven't looked at all of them. You know what though? A dollar ninety-seven per yard for 36 inches wide is only four bucks per yard and you'd get 72 inches wide if you put them together. That, that's a good fucking price. I might have to get some, but I don't see an employee and I don't feel like looking for one. But I think I'm going to find somebody to cut me um, a couple yards, maybe four yards, I don't know. It would just give me some muslin to play with. There is some more fabric. I'm waiting for somebody to come and cut. So I haven't priced these. It feels almost like upholstery fabric. Or, and some more up here. I'll show you this way. And I do believe that's it. And then they have some pre-cuts. Okay, it's quite obvious I didn't look around before I turned on my camera because look, another aisle. We have all these fleece and I think there's more flannels here. No, it's cotton, novelty kind of cotton for kids, probably good for pajamas. I don't know, probably that's why they're pulled aside. And before I say that's it, <laughs> this is it. I, uh, these are the Christmas prints, some pre-cuts, $4.97 a yard, I guess. And I really think that's it. I hope somebody can come and cut for me. I picked up four yards. Came up to $7.88. That's a good price. Ooh, I'm gonna look at the fusing. Okay, they have various fusing and some batting. The cotton batting is $7.98 per yard for that one. $4.97 per yard for this one. I don't know if it's 100% cotton or not. Polyester. Does not feel like polyester. Well, I guess it does. This one's got to be cotton. Yes, cotton. Foam. That's quite interesting. I've never seen that. 
$7.97 per yard. You can wash and tumble dry. Flex foam. It says one-sided fusible stabilizer. I don't feel a gluey... Oh, and there's a side with glue. Oh, my God. Only 20 inches wide. Hmm. Interesting. This is the weight, approximately, that I use. This might be a little thicker, which I think would be good. It's one-sided. So I'm going to look at the info. It's two ninety seven per yard. I'm going to see if they have it online. Okay, I'm glad I'm looking at this. This is a water-soluble. I guess that means the whole thing disappears after the fact. Yeah, it can be washed without leaving any kind of residue. It's for embroidery. I don't know. Obviously not what I use. I see a fusing that is very lightweight, and it's only $1.97 per yard, but it's not wide. I think it's like... Uh, 20 inches wide. But the thing is, it doesn't say if it's one-sided or double-sided, and it's hard to tell by touching it if there's glue on both sides because it's so thin. I don't know why it's so hard for them to say that. That's why I never, like, offer it to you guys online, because when I look at the, you know, the uh, ingredients, I don't know what to say, um... It won't come out and just say one-sided or double-sided glue on both sides. Would that be so hard to say? Both are awesome, but there's different uses. Sometimes you want the glue on just one side. So I'm going to just look at some crafts while I'm here. And I found yet some more fabric. Monk's cloth. This is cool stuff, but it is expensive. So $7.97 per yard, and it shrinks a lot. So let's see, it is 100% cotton, it is, I don't know how wide it is. Oh, why doesn't it just say how wide it is? I'm thinking probably 54 wide, and it comes in nice colors. I'll have to look at Monk's Cloth online. I checked some of their clearance things, but it was like crap, and no choice, really, no variety. So, uh, I think we'll just go to the car now. I didn't even go to the food side, and I would have liked some chicken wings. Why didn't I do that? It's, uh, don't feel like going back in. That was a pretty pleasant experience. The return process was super easy and absolutely no problems. And they quickly got somebody to cut my four yards of a muslin. I will be anxious to put that to good use. I like it for backing quilts. I briefly will tell you what I did today. I went to my mother's rehab to have a meeting with the caseworker, and there was an occupational therapist, her physical therapist, her nurse, the caseworker himself, my mother, and me. And it was to talk about a plan of action, lay out all the possible scenarios. All I know for sure is it looks like my mother will be in rehab for one to two more weeks. I don't think she really needs it for her leg. She seems to be doing really well. I do think that once they have somebody in there, they just try to keep them in there as long as they're allowed to, as long as Medicare is paying for it. So she will be, you know, in there. I'm sure they'll stretch it out as long as possible. So I'm guessing at least a week. It went... Better than I expected, be meaning I didn't lose my cool because I get very, very nervous in any kind of situation like that where I'm at a table with other people and I could lose my breath before I even start to talk. When I do talk, I always feel like I'm saying the wrong thing or I'm coming across as looking stupid. It's all anxiety and what makes it worse for me is if I am starting to say something and I either get cut off or they say, like at one point, he said, when it got to my turn, he's like, we do need to make this quick because we have another meeting. And I was like, Jesus, I didn't even fucking start talking yet. And all of a sudden I'm being told to rush. That makes me want to say, Never mind, I won't speak because that's how I'm trained. I'm trained to just not be significant or to matter. So there was that. And then there was another time that I was talking and I could tell I'm going off track a little bit. And he's like, 
yeah, what we really need to hear is what your plan is for the, and, uh, you know, and then again now, I will forever be embarrassed that I had to be stopped in the middle of a sentence. That's the stuff that bothers me the most. I feel so stupid because it's like, I know better. Why can't I just shut up? And, you know, it wasn't overboard, which is just always a reinforcement that I probably should never talk because I think that the world doesn't really give a shit. I think they're there because they have an agenda and it's not because anybody really cares, cares to hear, cares to understand, and even cares to allow enough time for a meeting that I think is pretty important. So when stuff like that happens to me, I don't forget it. I relive it over and over and over again and I make myself sick. When I have that anxiety of like, oh, why did I say that? Why didn't I say this? Why didn't I stop? And why did I, you know, look and, and, and maybe smile in a weird way? I, I relive all these things and it just keeps me a ball of anxiety. And like even in the store, as I would think of it, I'm trying to keep my mind off it, but all of a sudden it flashes and I'm I find that I even utter sounds like I'll go, oh, oh, you know, I, I, it's like I have to release it. And it can be somebody like right next to me. It's almost like a form of Tourette's. I mean, it's like I can't control it. And I'm surprised that a sound even came out of my mouth. And it's just, oh, oh it's so stressful for me. Now, I would like to say that, oh, in a few days, I'll have forgotten all about this. But that's not always the case. Some of you have heard me talk before that I have, like, something in my brain that repeats things over and over again, certain things, for years. I have this one instance where I said something and embarrassed myself when I was in college, in my 30s. So we're looking at the 1990s. That plays over and over in my head almost every day. If I think about it, in the middle of the night, I can't go back to sleep. That's one of a gazillion things that go on and on in my head. Sometimes it's not even anything to do with what I said or did, but it's just something I saw, and that will repeat over and over and over again. Again, maybe going back 15 years, 20 years, sitting at a table and somebody had two like little not lottery tickets but raffle tickets and at the table she just was like playing with them and then pushed them together that means absolutely nothing to me i can't get that out of my head that little playing with the tickets pushing them together again one of a gazillion things that i think of over and over it might be some words to a song it might be a commercial i saw as a child that i still see the tricks bunny rabbit or whatever saying tricks are for kids and i can see it it's like it plays in my head it's not that i just imagine it it's like i'm seeing it very fucked up way to live i know there are other people similar there are people that have that to an extreme that nothing is forgotten people like mary lou henner she can remember things that have happened and tell you the day and stuff like that so um but mine is it causes me great anxiety because i never know if all of a sudden something's going to flash in my head that's going to make me anxious or if it's going to be completely harmless and maybe just um distracting you know like the visual things that will play that don't cause me anxiety but again are distracting it's like i don't want to see you pushing two fucking tickets together for the rest of my life on that wooden table <sighs> This is why I don't like to create new memories or um, really want to be around people because I'm always taking a chance that something is going to get stuck in my head. It could be an okay thing, but chances are it's the stressful things that stay stuck and it just keeps building and building and I absolutely lose sleep over these things. At night, it's the worst because during the day, I, you know, I am preoccupied with other things, which is why I like to zone out. I like to zone out into my work or into a craft. It seems to be a little bit more manageable that way if I have deep thought into something else or I'm doing something repetitive. It's like now I just focus on the, the repetitive moves or a sound or something like that. That's why I love ASMR. It calms the noise. And I have to have very loud and right up in my ears ASMR. It has to block that part of my brain that wants to spit all kinds of other things out. 
So I like ASMR that is like scratching on the microphone, the binaural microphone, or, or loud tapping or scratching on something else. Those are the kinds of things that I like to listen to to help me sleep. But, but in the middle of the night, if I wake up and, you know, usually there's always a memory of some kind, it, I can't go back to sleep. And for some reason, it's like I'm too out of it to, you know, set myself up for ASMR again. And I just toss and turn and it's so stressful. <sighs> if you suffer from any of these things, that is something I'm very interested in knowing about in the comments. I have had some of you that say you get stuck on memories and things and that they will repeat. And I just find it very interesting. I haven't really read up on that a lot. I, I don't really know, but I would like to. I don't think it's something I can stop. I mean, I think it's just something that happens. I don't know. But it would be nice if it didn't cause the same pain. You know, for instance, I had a, a paper cut, many, many in my lifetime. That image will come to me with a paper cut, and I feel it. I feel the that little zing, you know, that little tiny paper cut, and it's like it goes through my whole body. Or if I think of a a certain death of something, even a pet or whatever, I feel it like it just happened. You know, like that first time you ever fall asleep after you've lost someone or something that you absolutely loved, and you wake up that very first time. It's like it's like crushing. It's like you can't even believe that it happened. That's how I feel, and I have to sometimes stop and think, did this just happen? Because I feel it with that intensity. It's like I relive the pain over and over and over again. Now, I don't know if that's a form of, and I never know, P, post-traumatic stress. Is it post-traumatic PTSD? Post-traumatic stress disorder? PTSD, I think it is. To me, it would feel like it's something like that, but, but don't people who suffer from that have something horrible happen, like they're in the war, and they just keep reliving that, or they're in a house fire, and they keep reliving that? I don't, like, you know, know why I would imagine a paper cut over and over again and relive that. I mean, it wasn't like a traumatic thing, but I don't know why my brain wants to continuously let me feel the pain of a paper cut, and, you know, and it's almost like, um, amplified. It's, I don't know. All right. So this is why I didn't really want to talk to you about what I went through today. Cause I knew it was going to put me on this, you know, um, discussion about my weird brain. And it all has to do a lot with why I am the way I am with social media, online social relationships, and even comments and stuff. It's like when I say it's all noise to me, it is. It's all noise. Even when I just read a comment, it can be loud in my head. It's like I'm reading it really, really loud and it's tiring. It's just very strange, and it's something that I just have to live with because I can't change the world around me. I, I could leave the world, the online world, but I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to have to live with it. So I'm going to go home, and I want to make some beef jerky for you guys, and maybe I can do that this afternoon. I'll probably be... I'll be home earlier than I thought, so maybe we can get that started and do a video on that. Might not be ready till tomorrow, but that's okay, because I've got a video for today, and I'm trying to not do videos every single day, because I have other stuff to do. But if the opportunity arises for me to record, I certainly will. So I'm just going to say bye for now. Thank you so much for watching, and do leave comments letting me know if you suffer any of these weird things that I go through, because I'd really love to know more about it. Thanks. Bye.